On my channel, I've previously covered many important battles in England's history, and today I'm going to be covering another one. In this video, I'm going to be going over the final battle fought between England and France during the famous Hundred Years' War, which ultimately resulted in an English defeat and the subsequent end of the long and bloody conflict. I am considering doing a video covering the entire Hundred Years' War, but it will take me ages since it's such a long topic, so I probably won't do it unless you guys really want to see it, so let me know in the comments if that's a video you'd be interested in. But with all that out the way, let's get into the bloody battle of Castillon and what led up to it. The breakdown of the 1420 Treaty of Toy would ultimately end up beginning the final stage of the Hundred Years' War. This period, from 1420 to 1453, is often referred to as the Wars of the Treaty of Toy, for control of the Crown of France. After the 1451 French capture of Bordeaux by the armies of Charles VII, the Hundred Years' War appeared to be at an end, with the English primarily focusing on reinforcing their only remaining possession in Calais and watching over the seas. Unsurprisingly, it wouldn't take long for an issue to arise once more, however, as after 300 years of Plantagenet rule, the citizens of Bordeaux considered themselves subjects of the English monarch and thus sent messages to Henry VI of England demanding that he recapture the province. In response to this, on the 17th of October 1453, the Earl of Shrewsbury, under orders from the King, landed near Bordeaux with a force of 3,000 men. A feared and famous military leader, the Earl was rumoured to be 75 or 85 years old at the time, although it is more likely he was only around 66. Regardless of his age though, with the cooperation of the townspeople, he easily took the city of Bordeaux on the 23rd of October. From this base, the English subsequently managed to take control over most of Western Gascony in southwestern France by the end of the year. This task was made easy by the fact that despite knowing an English expedition was coming, the French had expected it to come through Normandy in far northern France rather than the Bordeaux region in southwestern France. Following this surprise, the French king prepared his forces over the winter, and by early 1453 he was ready to counterattack. Charles invaded the province of Goyon, uh, home to Bordeaux, with three separate armies all heading for the big city. In preparation for the coming battle, the English commander received 3,000 additional men, led by his fourth and favourite son, apparently, John the Viscount Lyle. The French then laid siege to Castillon, approximately 40 kilometres east of Bordeaux, on the 8th of July, and despite initially planning to wait at Bordeaux for reinforcements, the Earl of Shrewsbury, whose name was John Talbot, probably should have mentioned that earlier, acceded to the pleas of the town leaders and, sent, and set out to relieve the besieged garrison. This would be no easy task, however, as the French officer, Jean Barreau, laid out the camp to maximise the French artillery's strength. In a defensive setup, Barreau's forces built an artillery park out of range from Cassion's guns. According to historian Desmond Seward, the park consisted of, of a deep trench with a wall of earth behind it which was strengthened by tree trunks. Its most remarkable feature was the irregular, wavy line of the ditch and earthwork, which enabled the guns to enfilade any attackers. On top of these ingenious features, the park included up to 300 guns of various sizes and was protected by a ditch and defensive wall known as palisade or stake wall on three sides, as well as a steep bank of the river Lidoire on the fourth side. Talbot left Bordeaux on the 16th of July and marched ahead of the majority of his forces, arriving at Libourne by sunset with only 500 men at arms and 800 mounted archers. The following day, this force defeated a small French detachment of archers stationed at a priory near Castillon. Despite earlier plans to wait for reinforcements, Talbot decided to press his men onward to the French camp, believing his remaining forces would arrive soon. Even though this seems rather foolish in hindsight, Talbot also decided to push forward due to reports that the French were retreating. Unfortunately for Talbot, however, the cloud of dust leaving the camp, which the townsmen believed was indicative of a, of a retreat, was in fact created by camp followers departing before the battle. Oblivious to this fact, the English advanced but soon ran into the full force of the French army. Despite being outnumbered and in a vulnerable position, Talbot ordered his men to continue fighting. This reckless order is believed to be due to the fact that his pride and honour were at stake, for he had already ordered his men to battle when he initially discovered the strength of the French position. According to British military historian David Nicole, the battle itself was highly characteristic of the period, 
with the strong field guns obliterating the advancing Englishmen, with each shot reportedly killing six men at a time. During the fighting, Talbot's reinforcements continued to arrive little by little, only to suffer the same fate. Despite the odds against the English, the battle incredibly lasted over an hour, and to a thousand strong, Breton cavalry force, led by Peter II, Duke of Brittany, crashed into their right flank, sending them into retreat. The battle ended in an English rout, with both Talbot and his son being killed. There is some debate over the manner of Talbot's death, but it appears that his horse was killed by a cannon shot, and with its mass pinning him down, a French archer killed him with an axe. Alongside Talbot and his son, it is believed that the English forces suffered a whopping 4,000 casualties killed, wounded, or captured, while the French suffered only 100 in comparison. With this massive defeat, English authority in Gascony eroded, and the French retook Bordeaux on the 19th of October. Despite this battle now being viewed as the ending point of the long conflict, it was not apparent to either side at the time that the war was over. The outcome of this battle would end up having major repercussions outside of the loss of the Bordeaux region, as some have speculated that it was the news of this defeat that sparked the mental breakdown of Henry VI, whose rule and mental illness I covered in my most recent video, that ultimately resulted in the outbreak of the Wars of the Roses in England. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Again, if you'd like to see me make a video on the entire Hundred Years War, please let me know in the comments. But with all that out of the way, as always, I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you in the next one.